This is the tiniest and the easiest PC build I have ever done. The whole build cost me $500 and for the price it delivers a great value. I build it step by step, so hit the like button and let's start. As you might already guess, this is not a generic PC. And the main star here is the ASRock Desk Mini X600 Barebone. I got it for under $200 from Amazon. In the box we have a manual, I didn't know there was a white version. Then we have a PC case in the foam. I'm very surprised with the size, I can already tell it will be a very compact PC. And on the bottom we have all the accessories, which include the CPU cooler, we'll check it later. Then we have a power cord, bags with screws, rubber legs, SATA cables, M.2 Wi-Fi card with antennas and a power adapter. This build doesn't require any dedicated power supply, the whole build just 120 watts. On the front we have a decorative plastic panel with a headphones jack, USB 3, type C and mic port if you need it separately. Actually never seen that before, it's pretty nice. A little bit higher we have power button and indication. I like the simple design, the rest of the case is all metal. The top and side panels are filled with cooling openings, on the back side panel has the mount holes in case you want to mount it behind your monitor or TV. And on the back the case has a motherboard I.O. Our motherboard has a power port, display, HDMI and VGA for video output, two USBs and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. The design is pretty minimalistic, I feel that 120 watt limit, but it should be enough for most users. Overall very nice first impressions, let's take a look inside. To open the case you remove four screws from the back and the motherboard tray should slide out. It wasn't easy so I loosened it with a long screwdriver. And here's our motherboard. It's a simple AMD X600 chipset motherboard, but it has everything we need. An AM5 socket, this new one has pins, so gotta be careful. Next we have a 2 sodium DDR5, 1 key E slot for Wi-Fi card, M.2 slot, this one is Gen 5, and if you remove the motherboard, you'll find another M.2 on the other side, which is Gen 4. It also supports a dual 2.5 SATA setup, which is pretty impressive for the size, but we're not gonna gonna need that in this build. Let's move to the CPU. For this kind of build, it is important to get a good CPU. After some research, I decided to go with the Ryzen 5 8600G, which cost $170. For the price, we have a new gen 6 core 12 thread CPU with 4.3 GHz base and 5 GHz boost clock. And most importantly, it has AMD Radeon 760M graphics. ASRock recommends 65 watt CPU, so that's our TDP. The CPU looks pretty good and it it also comes with the AMD stock cooler. The 8500G is also a solid choice for $20 cheaper, but you get a bit slower base frequency and weaker graphics. Another possible choice is 8700G. It is a bit more powerful than our 8600G, but with the $100 plus dollar price difference, it's not worth it in my case. AM5 CPU installation is just like any other. Match the triangle and gently place the CPU in the socket. Make sure the keys are all matching and close the socket. Looks Great, let's move to the RAM. I needed a DDR5 laptop memory and my choice was between Kingston Fury Impact or Crucial 32GB kits. They both have 5600MHz frequency and both are pretty good options. I went with the Kingston because it was on sale for $93 and it also has better latency, 40 versus 46. At the time I haven't found any 16GB kit, which will make more sense in a budget PC. But there is a good 16GB kit from Crucial right now, I'll leave a link below. Installation is very desktop like, open the clips from both sides and push the RAM stick down until the clips close. The next step was to install antennas to the case. I removed the plugs, the easiest way is to press them with the pliers. Then I inserted the antennas and secured them with the washers and nuts. Next I connected the antennas to the Wi-Fi card, inserted it in the slot and secured with the screw. Now it's time for the storage. Tan Xiang sent their S880 model, which is a 2TB Gen 4 M.2 SSD. In the box we have SSD itself, manual, mounting screw and we even get a screwdriver, which is pretty cool. The SSD also has a sticker with several layers, including aluminum foil for cooling, so you can use it without additional cooling even in compact builds like ours. Installation is very simple, just insert it in a slot, press down and secure it with a screw. If you need a lot of fast storage, this SSD is a great choice. Looking ahead it showed a great speed in the benchmark. It scores 7000 
in read and 6400 megabytes per second in write speed. Alternatively, to keep the build mode to the budget side, you can go with a Fangxiang S500 Pro. For 38 dollars, you get a Gen 3 512GB SSD that comes with the same accessories and also has a sticker with cooling. Gen 3 is still very capable and it will deliver a good performance in games as well. Huge thanks to Fangxiang to sending these. Let's now install the cooler. I have two options here, AMD stock cooler or Adrock. I decided to go with the AMD stock cooler first because it seemed it would perform better. The instruction actually doesn't say that it could fit, but there is a trick. If you remove the top cover from the case, just two screws, it becomes a bit thinner and should fit inside the case. So I removed the stock brackets and screwed in the CPU cooler. Then I connected the fan, front panel and tried to slide it in the case. It doesn't slide easy, you have to pull on the side panel to dodge these two sticking case mountings. But it is possible and when the case is all the way in, it looks pretty good. If you don't want to deal with it, go with the Azrock stock cooler. It would be a lot easier and looking ahead, I will say there is not much difference. So PC is now ready for the first boot. I connected the monitor and PC booted without any problems. I then installed Windows 11. In addition to the regular Windows installation and updates, I updated drivers with the Azrock Live Update app, installed AMD drivers and updated the BIOS to the latest 4.03 version. With this BIOS, RAM easily picks up 6000 MHz and overall system stability is better. Let's now test what kind of performance we get. In Cinebench, PC scored 12,300 points and in 3 Mark, I got 2,900 points. That is a very impressive number for the iGPU build. Let's jump into online games. Resolution is 1080p and refresh rate is 165Hz. In Valorant, on medium settings, getting around 300 FPS. You can see the frame time graph, the game runs very well. Same situation in CS2, with the medium settings, getting good frame time with around 100 FPS most of the time. Let's try something more demanding. In Fortnite, with DirectX 12, medium settings and 72% 3D, I got great visual quality with smooth 60 plus FPS most of the time, with raises to 80 in some locations. I tried performance mode as well and got stable around 200 FPS. There is a loss in visuals, but it's great for competitive gameplay. Let's see what we got in Warzone, and here with native 1080p low preset, I got playable at around 60 FPS with no freezes. I would say it is a very impressive performance for the iGPU. I also tested Apex Legends and PUBG. In Apex Legends with low settings, I got 60 to 80 FPS range depending on location. And in PUBG on low settings, I got 45 plus. I think it's safe to say that our 8600G shows decent performance in online games. I'm actually a little shocked how good this iGPU is. Notice that I haven't used any upscaling tech in any game and it was able to provide good experience. That's a whole new level of integrated graphics. Let's move to the single player. In Elden Ring on low settings, I'm getting 30 plus FPS. FPS. The frame time graph is relatively stable and even in loaded scenes FPS doesn't drop below 30. Raising the bar in recently released God of War Ragnarok for PC with low settings and FSR 3.0 in performance mode I got surprisingly playable around 50 FPS. In Silent Hill 2 with low settings and FSR in ultra performance mode I got 30 FPS. It looks playable but there is a noticeable input lag so I wouldn't recommend it. Another story with Spider-Man with low settings and FSR in performance mode here, I got very playable 40 to 50 FPS. I also gave it a try in the new survival game Project Castaway and even though the image looks nice, FPS is not stable enough. You can see in demanding games like this, the CPU temperature gets up to 92 degrees. This is expected in such a tiny PC and technically it's far from critical. As promised, I tested the Adra cooler as well. It is significantly easier to install, just hook the bracket from each side and secure it by turning the lever. With this cooler you can easily slide the motherboard in the case. I stress tested PC with each cooler and I would not say there is a difference in performance. They are both pretty similar. The only difference is the noise. Take a listen to AMD and ASRock. You heard it, the Azra cooler is more annoying. If you are interested in improving both thermals and noise, you can go with an Octua low profile AM5 cooler. Overall, this tiny PC build exceeded all my expectations. I think it's a great and affordable way to build a compact budget PC that is great for everyday use and some gaming. I would easily build this for a family member or friend. Let me know what you think about it, I'll leave all links below and subscribe to see more videos like this.